Hello and welcome to the week ahead from the Financial Times in London. Here's what we're looking at in the coming week. In the US, the focus will be on California and the race to be the Democratic nominee for the US presidency. Brazil's central bank will meet to set rates amid political and economic turmoil in the country. And we'll find out why pressure is building up on WPP Chief Executive Sir Martin Sorrell. First, the US and the race for the White House. With Donald Trump having taken the title as presumptive Republican nominee, attention is now focused on who will be his Democrat challenger. While Hillary Clinton seems close to securing the nomination, the California primary on Tuesday will be one of her toughest fights. Polls are predicting an extremely tight race and her competitor, Bernie Sanders, shows no sign of relenting. They didn't think we would go very far. Well, a year has come and gone. And up till now, we have won the primaries and caucuses in 20 states in this country. And if you promise not to tell Secretary Clinton, she's getting very nervous lately. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to add to her anxiety. So if you promise not to tell her, we're going to win here in California on June 7th. Mr. Sanders' supporters will be hoping that a win in California will give him momentum to push his left-wing policies to the party's platform, while Ms. Clinton hopes that an outright victory in the state will result in Mr. Sanders' supporters rallying around her. Now to Brazil, where the central bank is due to meet this week to set the CELIC, its benchmark interest rate. The country is in political and economic turmoil after the suspension of President Dilma Rousseff on charges of budgetary crimes, and acting President Michel Temer has sought to shore up investor confidence with the appointment of Elan Goldfein to head the country's central bank. And as the FT's Joe Leahy in Sao Paulo explains, the government is hoping his past experience will help steer the country out of its worst recession in a century. Brazil's new central bank chief, Elaine Goldfein, brings a wealth of experience to the job. He's done stints on the IMF, he's been a central bank uh, director before, and in his last job he was chief economist of Itaú Unibanco, Brazil's largest private sector bank. In his previous job, he was seen as quite dovish. Brazil's uh, selic rate has been at highs of 14.25% for some time. He had predicted this would fall to 10% by 2017. The reason for that is that inflation has been softening. However, in his first weeks in the job, he'll probably be hawkish just to bring some credibility to the position before beginning to soften off on interest rates and monetary policy towards the second half of this year. With the economy in deep recession, there's little reason to keep interest rates so high. And finally, to the prickly issue of executive pay. The world's largest advertising group, WPP, will hold its annual general meeting this week. In recent years, the gathering has provided a platform for disgruntled shareholders to show their disdain at the remuneration policy set by the company's board for its chief executive, Sir Martin Sorrell. And with another rise in his pay this year, the protests are set to get louder still, as our digital media correspondent Robert Cookson explains. Sir so Martin Sorrell's recently been awarded a £70 million pay package, one of the highest ever for a FTSE 100 CEO. So there's understandably been a bit of controversy around whether that's too high a level. Um, in recent years, WPP shareholders have always registered a bit of a protest vote at the AGM on WPP's remuneration policy, and that's likely to be the same this year. But given the scale, the £70 million figure, it's likely to be a bit higher. However, this isn't a binding vote, and it's very unlikely that the bulk of shareholders will vote against the policy. Therefore, WPP doesn't really have too much to worry about. The backlash amongst WPP investors comes amid a wider backdrop of rebellions by shareholders, unhappy with the remuneration policies of executives at some of the world's largest companies, including Deutsche Bank, Citigroup and Renault. And that's what the week ahead looks like from the Financial Times in London.